Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Three students hospitalized following accident in St. Elizabeth. East Portland residents react to PNP choice for a candidate. And later in sports, five-time world champion Shelly and Fraser Price allegedly leaves elite performance track club. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kerry and Simpson. Here are the details. Three students from a prep school in Santa Cruz have been hospitalized following an accident on the Longwood Main Road in St. Elizabeth this morning. According to reports, about 7.32 a.m., the driver of a white Honda motor car was reportedly heading east from Santa Cruz towards Goshen when he allegedly overtook a line of vehicles. A blue Subaru traveling in the opposite direction, transporting the children to school, swerved to avoid being hit and crashed into a nearby wall. The driver of the Honda has been taken into custody for questioning. Fire destroyed an off-track betting location in Mandeville in the early hours of Wednesday morning. According to reports, sometime around 1 o'clock, the Mandeville Fire Station received a call in response to the blaze. Rowan Powell is superintendent at the Mandeville Fire Station. Initial call said Juicy Plaza. When we arrived on the scene, we realized it was an off-track betting and gaming um, parlor adjacent to the plaza. The building was fully engulfed in flame. We had two units on scene. Eventually, the Christiana unit arrived to make it three. We attacked the blaze with two jets. Upon, after, after everything was cooled down and we started our assessment, we realized that everything was totally lost. The cause of the fire is not known. Investigations are ongoing. Commanding officer for the Westmoreland Police Division, Superintendent Arth Neil Dobson, has described Monday night sh mass shooting in the parish as heartless and brutal. Eight people were shot, four fatally in the attack. Now, even as investigations continue, the police are imploring residents to assist in bringing the criminals to justice. The police is actively investigating the matter and all resources are being utilized to bring the perpetrators to justice. We are calling on anyone with information about the shooting or those who have witnessed the incident to come forward and assist the police. Community cooperation is vital in ensuring that justice is served and the perpetrators are brought to justice and further violence is prevented. We are appealing to those involved in hiding or removing the firearm from the scene to immediately turn it over to the police. Every effort must be made to remove illegal guns from our streets, especially when they are connected with acts of violence. He has every right to seek judicial review. The reaction from one political commentator in the wake of news that attorneys for Prime Minister Andrew Honus yesterday filed a suit in the Supreme Court seeking judicial review on the decisions made by the Integrity Commission. It is an access to a judicial process that is available to every citizen. The Prime Minister is himself a citizen and if he feels that the report uh, is wrong, um, as he has been contending for some time now, he has every right to seek a judicial review on the matter. Um, and so, yes, uh, I, I don't find it a particularly controversial um, stance, albeit unprecedented. The Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, is set to join the Rules Committee of the Supreme Court. This follows changes to the Judicature Rules of Court Act, which was passed in, on Tuesday in the House of Representatives. The Rules Committee makes guidelines to ensure the proper functioning of the Supreme Court and Court of Appeal. Currently, a number of individuals sit on the committee. The Chief Justice, President of the Court of Appeal, a Judge of the Supreme Court, the Attorney General, Director of State Proceedings, and five attorneys in private practice appointed by the Prime Minister and nominated by the Bar Council. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck says the committee indicated the need for the DPP to join the membership, given the DPP now has the right to appeal. As the DPP is not a member of the committee, the DPP is not empowered to make any contribution towards the preparation of these rules of court. In addition to the rules of court that are being prepared, 
in respect of the DPP's right to appeal, Mr. Speaker. There are other rules, of course, that have been contemplated that may have an impact on the office of the DPP. For instance, rules relating to criminal case management and digital audio recording in criminal matters. Similarly, the DPP has no opportunity to offer contribution towards the preparation of these rules of court as a result of the exclusion from the committee. Reactions this afternoon to news that the People's National Party has confirmed Attorney Isa Buchanan as its candidate for Portland Eastern in the upcoming general election. In a media release yesterday, the PNP said Mr. Buchanan is prepared to represent the interests of the constituents and with commitment and focus. Mr. Buchanan replaces Colin Bell, who resigned last month amid what he called a lack of support. Now our new center visited Very the constituency ready. for a reaction. Once is a man who come to represent me, me ready long time. I yeah. don't know much about him still, but sometimes you have to just make, um, take, uh, make somebody else come in and take over. And so what you can do for the community, I really, really need some help and everything, you know. You have a chance to with him. You have a chance. Yeah. No. Do you see any competition between him and um, the city and he now? No. What's the matter? No. Mr. Buchanan will go up against Anne-Marie Vaz of the Jamaica Labour Party, who is currently the Member of Parliament. Calls to Mrs. Vaz for a reaction went unanswered. Flooding in Port Moran Square in St. Thomas again forced several business doors shut, commuters stranded and motorists braving murky water Monday. As Jamila Maitland reports, people who live and work in the area believe the neglected Ward River and choked drains are the cause for the flooding. The Port Moran Square in St. Thomas resembled a pot of stew on Monday after just a couple hours of rain. They need to do something better than this. It can't work. It can't work at all. So they are trying to need to come and come, come sheet like how it is and how as is. On approaching the usually busy town center, it was clear that a decision weighed motorists and commuters down. Brave the floodwaters, wait until the water eased, or use an alternate route. And I wish when you can have a good idea for get to do something towards the square. That's all I'm saying today still. Quite really miserable. Panos. We can't get through we we're about to do things like all day, like today the rainfall. Constantly, it's a miserable of the place, and it's out harder enough for you know, so boy, you want to do your business and you can't get to do it, you know. Commuters were forced to remove their shoes, roll up their trousers, and walk in the knee high murky waters to meet the transportation parked on the other side. I have been in Portland from morning for work, but it is impossible now to pass country the square to go home. So I'm just calling on the relevant authorities to see what they can do to address the situation in the shortest possible time. Port Morant is prone to flooding. Angry motorists last week accused the government of neglect. The Member of Parliament, Dr. Michelle Charles, and contractor of the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project, CHECK, on Thursday, were overseeing workmen using marl on the road to alleviate the flooding. Every single week, China Harbor has tried to maintain this. So as bad as it looks right now, they have been trying to maintain this area. And they're going to do some more maintenance program tomorrow. But Anthony Thomas, who's been living in the area for over 50 years, says that's not the cause of the flooding. All of the drain them are black. The water them, the river them, they come out, they ride and everything. The water have nowhere to run. They have to try to find a place and burn back all the drain what they used to do from, from before when they were growing. Clogged drains aside, residents pointed to the Ward River that runs westerly through the town as another factor. The river has a dredge at least 16 feet. We can contain the amount of water we are coming from all of them directions. Now, guys are basing this. From above, the depth of the water in the river is inching the surface of the playfield close by. On the other side, businesses were forced to close their doors. Within Port Moran Square, a stream that carries water from uphill communities 
is also blocked. A makeshift barrier to warn the public of the danger of the camouflaging flood water was washed away. Commuters suggesting cleaning the stream. TVJ News put the issue to the National Works Agency, NWA. Communications manager Stephen Shaw has committed to providing a response at a later date. And with more rain in the forecast, those who live, work, or travel through Port Moran Square may be further inconvenienced. Jamila Maitland, TVJ News. It's time for a break. Stay with us. More local stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. It's now time for the Business Minute. Jamaicans paid more for transportation services over the last year. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica Statin says there was an average increase of 10.3% for prices in the group for the 12 months ended August. In its latest Consumer Price Index Bulletin, Statin says for the month of August alone, those prices increased by 0.2% compared to July. This was mainly due to a 1.7% decline in prices linked to the class fuels and lubricants for personal transport equipment. Further afield, the union representing striking dock workers says major U.S. ports will stay shut until pay demands are met. Harold Daggett, head of the International Longshores Men's Association, ILA, made the vow on a picket line in New Jersey on Tuesday as tens of thousands of dock workers on the East and Gulf coasts walked out in a bid to win a better labor deal. Businesses are bracing for the possibility of a prolonged ports shutdown which threatens to cause havoc to global trade and the U.S. economy. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Raquel Porter. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at perimenopause. So, for example, the hot flashes that we talk about, just feeling hot, your heart um, racing, feel like you're having palpitation, and sometimes into a full-on panic attack. That could be a symptom of your thyroid um, not functioning properly. You could have something that is called hyperthyroidism. And so that's why it's absolutely critical to really get those blood work, look at your thyroid function, look at the, the other hormones, your estrogen. That's the health report in primetime news at 7. And now for today's healthy living tip. Limit caffeine, alcohol, and spicy foods. Eat whole foods, fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Practice yoga, meditation, or deep breathing. And join support groups or talk to friends and family. Time now for the top regional and international stories. In the region, a homicide investigation is underway in St. Vincent after the body of 13-year-old Matthew D'Souza was found half-naked on a beach showing head injuries. Three minors, including an 11-year-old girl, are in custody, claiming to have witnessed the incident where one boy allegedly struck D'Souza. This marks the fourth homicide in the area since Friday, bringing the year's total to 34. On the international scene, Iran launched approximately 180 missiles at Israel, targeting key locations including the Mossad headquarters and an airbase. Videos from CNN's analysis reveal damage in densely populated areas of Tel Aviv and significant strikes in the desert. While it's unclear if there was a serious damage, the attacks align with U.S. and Israeli intelligence predictions regarding potential targets. And those were just some of the top regional and international stories. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report. <laughs> 